and welcome back to Retro Tech Toys. Today I wanted to restore and discuss the Tandy Radio Shack 64K Color Computer 2. This computer came out in 1983. It's a home computer made by Tandy Radio Shack. It has a full stroke 53 key keyboard with arrow keys, break, clear, and two shift keys. The CPU is a Motorola 6809E. It operated at 0.89 megahertz. And it came in several variances, a 16K, a 32K, or a 64K computer. My particular model is a 64K computer. Mine says Tandy. Uh, some of them said uh, TRS or Radio Shack. Uh, mine was the later model of color computer too that says Tandy. Uh, this has an 8K color basic ROM. Later models had a 16K extended color basic ROM text mode of 32 by 16. Graphics modes are as follows. There's a two color mode at 256 by 192, a two and four color mode at 128 by 192, a four and two color mode at 128 by 96, and an eight color mode at 32 by 64. There are a total of nine colors. As for sound, there is one voice, and there are a variety of ports in the back, including an expansion and cartridge connector, two analog joystick connectors, a cassette interface, an RS-232 serial port, and a TV RF connector. So why don't we go ahead and get this computer taken apart and we'll look at the insides, see how dirty it is and what we need to do to get it restored. I actually bought this on Facebook Marketplace for a total of $30. I had to drive about an hour to get it and it was at about midnight. so. It was a little scary, but the dude turned out to be pretty nice. He just wanted to sell it. He needed to sell it that day. So I drove out there and grabbed it. This is one of the first computers I had as a kid that holds a really, really special place in my collection because of that. One thing I forgot to mention was that when this computer came out in 1983, the 16K model cost $159.95. The 16K extended model was $199.95, and this 64K extended model was $259.95. But anyway, let's go ahead and take it apart, look inside, and see what we can do. Taking apart the Color Computer 2 is quite simple. You just have a series of six screws, and there's actually a screw under the black warranty label, but it looks like somebody's already been inside there, so my warranty's already voided. Be careful if yours isn't. So yeah, we'll just get these screws taken off, and after you do that, the top lifts right off. It's not a problem. Okay, now the keyboard pops right off after you Carefully remove the ribbon cable, and as you can see, the power supply is inside the unit. There's a section back here where the TV RF connector goes that I need to check out because the RF connector seems to be a little bit shorted out. There was some rust on top, but everything inside seems pretty good, and it looks like nothing's loose, so there's nothing really to solder back in. That port's probably just going to have to be replaced. As you can see here, we've got a view of the cartridge port and of the circuitry inside, the various chips. I'm gonna use this blaster from two, uh, 1997 that I got at an estate sale that still works to blow some of the air out. Yeah, I got this air blaster uh, at an estate sale for like a quarter. It's from 1997, it works great. Everything in here seems to be pretty clean. I already wiped the outside, so there's no issues there. I cleaned the keyboard the best I could. I don't really think this needs retro brighting or anything like that. And it looks like the capacitors all look pretty good. This one's fine, that one's fine. There are a couple of more capacitors on the unit as well, here and here. Uh, they all look good to me, so no caps that need to be redone. So let's go ahead and put everything back together. And uh, once we do that, we'll power it on and check out some games. Just make sure that after you put the keyboard back on, first make sure you slide the ribbon cable in like so, and then carefully rest the keyboard on the mounting pegs. That's really all you need to do there. And after we take care of that, we just close the unit right back up. As you can see, everything here looks clean as well. So let's just close the unit back up. I've got a couple of yellowed spots on the keys, but nothing major, so as I said, I wouldn't worry about retro writing. Okay, let's check out the ports. We have a power port, we have an RF TV port, 
we have the channel selector switch, two controller ports, the aforementioned serial port, we have the cassette port, and a reset button. This cable I actually made myself. I didn't even solder it. I just cut a coax cable and I cut the video part of an RCA cable. And I spliced them together and used some electrical tape. It works pretty well. I'm gonna get something a little bit better, but for my purposes for now, this cable works just fine. It allows me to pretty much hook up to any modern television. It also allows me to hook up to, to some older TVs like the super cool wood panel TV you see in the background. I have a couple of games. This one's called Demon Attack. Uh, the label I actually remade from scratch. I watched uh, 8-Bit Guy restore a label for a cartridge, and you know it looked about like this one too. And this is my other one. I haven't done it yet, but I watched an episode of 8-Bit Guy, and I did my own restoration after checking his out. And I think it looks pretty good. I highly suggest that you watch his episode on restoring cartridge labels because it's really informative. Here's Demon Attack. This is actually a pretty fun game. It's pretty difficult as well. Um, pretty much it's your standard, you know, space shoot 'em up. We're shooting at enemies that are shooting at us and you have to eliminate everybody on the screen and then you ascend to the next level. Eventually you get to a boss. The boss is really hard, at least the first boss. I've never gotten past the first boss. Because that was the thing about games in the 80s they just got harder and harder and harder until you died. And that's pretty much the case for this one as well. I highly doubt that I'm going to make it to the first boss, but we'll see. But you know, for a game that was made in the early to mid 80s, I think it looks extremely clear. Uh, in my opinion, it's, you know, at least NES quality, if not a little better. Or I'm probably pretty biased because I'm super partial to the color computer too, and to Tandy products in general. As I mentioned before, Tandy uh, was pretty much a mainstay in my family. We started out with a color computer too, and then we moved on to a Tandy 1000 EX, which is actually my dream retro computer. I'd like to get another one. I haven't been able to track one down that I can afford yet. If you all have any color computer 2 games that you would suggest to me or that you just absolutely love, also, let me know in the comments section, because I'm always looking for new games to add to my collection. Right now, I just have these two, but they're pretty enjoyable. I've played the heck out of them for hours and hours and hours. I remember my wife actually mentioned that uh, she and I play very different games, because she's typically stuck on the Nintendo Switch, which I think is a great system, too. But I like my super old retro games. All right, let's see if I can make it to the bosses right after this guy. Let's see if I can even sort of make it. You never know. I've made it a couple of times. No, I did not. <laughs> not going to happen. Anyway, let's go ahead and check out uh, Dragonfire. It's another awesome game. And just like this one, it just gets harder and harder and harder until you die. That's pretty much what I'm used to at this point. Dragonfire is pretty cool because you're a guy and you're running into various rooms of the castle here, and you have to dodge the flame that the dragon's throwing at you. And if you can dodge the flame, you get into the room where the dragon is, and you have to collect treasure while you dodge the actual dragon and the room. Uh, and it's a lot harder than it looks. Eventually, the ground will start opening up underneath of you, and there's a guy that throws bombs at you, and it just gets harder and harder and harder and harder as you go. I believe after this level here, you'll get the ground that opens up, if I could even get there. I'm pretty clumsy today. I made it back to the dragon again. And yeah, here it is. Here's where you've got the uh, ground kind of opens up almost like a drawbridge. So you're dodging flames and you have to make sure that you hit the bridge just right not like that. As I said, it's a pretty fun game, but it'll definitely test your patience. It makes it that much more fun, though, to play it on my old retro wood panel TV. This is actually another find that I got for free from a liquidator down the road who puts old TVs out that he doesn't sell. He doesn't sell CRT TVs at all. He just puts them out. And you can have them for free. 
He's actually closing down soon. It's pretty sad. So, no more cool free finds, at least from there. And all right, now we've got one more room here where it's just the dragon fire and the bridge. And after this room, I believe we get the guy with the bomb. There we go. And this part of the game where you're getting the treasure from the dragon, it never seems to get more difficult. It's just the levels. Yeah, here we go. Here we go. He throws bombs at you and they explode. And you're dodging fire. And you're dodging the bridge that opens up. It's hard. Anyway, I can't do it. So that's it for that. And I think you guys are already familiar with Color Basic Extended. You know how that works. You know, just it's just your typical basic, you know, Tandy Radio Shack Extended Basic 1.1. You can write a couple cute little programs, but you really can't program a whole lot with it. So I'm not going to bother with that. You've seen that already. But yeah, that's your Color Computer 2 by Radio Shack. And uh, it's one of my favorites. I'm always looking to get more applications for it, more video games to play on it. Um, I'd like to get a hold of a Color Computer 3, too, at some point. Actually, I'd like to collect all of them. You know, the first one. I'd like to get a couple of the uh, TRS all-in-ones that they came out with before these. I'm just a big Tandy fan. But anyway, I appreciate you all for watching Retro Tech Toys. And as always, I'll see you soon. Thank you so much for liking and subscribing. I have a video that I'd like to do on a Commodore SX-64 Executive All-in-One that I got recently. And that's probably what's going to come up next or very soon. And I'll see you then.